Hi everyone, in this video I will talk about croup, which is an inflammation of the upper airway, hence the name laryngotracheal bronchitis. It is usually triggered by a virus, occurs generally between the ages of 6 months and 6 years. The viruses are usually the parainfluenza virus 1 and 2 or the RSV respiratory syncytial virus, and it is often worse at night. The differential diagnoses in croup are very important because they resemble acute upper airway obstruction, which are bacterial tracheitis, inhaled foreign body, and anaphylaxis. If you need more details about acute upper airway obstruction, please leave a comment below. In the examination of croup patients, we would find a barking cough, inspiratory strider, a hoarse voice, the child may have associated widespread wheezing, and increased work of breathing. Now you will hear the strider. And this is the barking cough. The risk factors for severe croup are pre-existing narrowing of upper airways, previous admission with severe croup, young age, it is uncommon to have croup before six months, and it is rare to have it before three months, so we should consider alternative diagnosis and causes of upper airway obstruction. So as you can see in this table, it divides croup into mild, moderate, and severe according to the signs. Behavior is normal in mild, and there is mild agitation in moderate, and there is increasing agitation or drowsiness in severe croup. While strider is not present in mild, and can be present if the child is active or upset only in mild, and moderate, there is intermittent strider even at rest, while in severe, the strider is persistent at rest. As for the respiratory rate, it would be normal in mild. In moderate, we'd have increased respiratory rate, and there is a marked increase or a decrease in respiratory rate in severe. The accessory muscle use, the, we would have none or minimal in mild croup, while in moderate croup, we'd find moderate chest wall retraction, and in severe, we'd find marked chest wall retraction. Hypoxia is a late sign which indicates life threatening croup. Now we'll move on to management. We will start by investigations. No investigations are needed in croup, including nasopharyngeal aspirate, x-rays, and blood tests, and which may cause distress to the child and worsening of symptoms. So none are needed. As for the treatment, minimal handling. That's the gold standard. To avoid worsening of symptoms, and that includes limited examination as well. We should also keep children with carers uh, to reduce distress, and children will adopt a position of comfort that minimizes airway obstruction. Do not change this position. This flowchart will present the treatment of croup in details. If a child presents with mild or moderate, Croup, what we do is we give dexamethasone 0.15 mg per kg orally or prednisolone 1 mg per kg orally with a repeat dose the following evening. And then we discharge the child home once the strider free at rest. If there is deterioration or if the child presents with severe croup, what we do is we give nebulized adrenaline. 0.5 ml per kg of 1 to 1,000 to maximum 5 ml undiluted or 0.5 ml of 1% respirator solution, 10 mg per ml, diluted to 4 ml and 
dexamethasone 0.6 mg per kilogram with a maximum dose of 12 mg IM, IV or orally. So now if we have good response then we consider discharge at 4 hours post adrenaline if strider free at rest. We can consider longer observation more than 4 hours post adrenaline for a child who presents overnight, lives far from medical care, presents with strider more than once during the same illness and has risk factors for severe croup. We can repeat adrenaline dose if further deterioration occurs. Consider admission or transfer as appropriate. If we have minimal or poor response, we repeat the dose of adrenaline and consider alternative diagnosis, escalation and to senior or ICU. If we suspect life-threatening croup at any time, we should immediately contact the senior and the ICU and the anesthetics. And then we should give nebulized adrenaline 0.5 ml per kg of 1 to 1000 to maximum 5 mls or 5 milligrams. And we give also oxygen 15 liters per minute via non-breather mask and we give systemic corticosteroids. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them below in the comment section. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, please leave them below. Subscribe to my channel to support me. Press the like button and the notification bell to get notified whenever I upload. Thank you so much.